Greetings, everybody. This is Stell from Stellwork Studio. Um, just putting on my socks today. And discovered this. A lovely hole. And I know I've done a blog post about how to darn holes in socks, but I've never done a video, so I'm going to do a video. Um, just a few things things about darning um and I know a lot of people are like well why would you want to darn socks when um they don't cost very much to repair well I buy 15 to 20 dollar wool socks I want them to last as long as possible I have some that are as old as my you know 16 year old <laughs> so and I'm still wearing them um because I've darned holes that have developed um now, if you ask me why I'm darning my darn tough socks when I can just send those back to get them replaced, it's because I don't want to send them back. I have to fill out stuff and put it in the mail. and I'd rather just darn it. <laughs> Once it's really destroyed, then I'll send it back and get a new one. Um, okay, so materials for this. Because it's washable wool... And I don't have a lot of washable wool yarn around. I'm using um, acrylic crochet thread from Hattie Labby. This stuff. Um, it's, it's smooth. It won't shrink. And um, it's durable enough that it'll, it'll work. If you're doing cotton socks, use cotton crochet thread. Um, I wouldn't go any heavier than that because then you'll end up with a really heavy darn. Um, the next thing that you need is a longer needle. I think this might be a doll making needle actually. But you can buy darning needles specifically for that purpose. It's just a regular needle that's a little bit longer with a little bit bigger eye to get yarn through it. And then the third thing that you need is a working surface. Also known as a darning egg or um, sometimes you can get some that are, you know, bigger around and more flat on top. Look, they look like a mushroom. They're called darning mushrooms. Um, this one's an antique one that I found. This one's the one that I'm going to use today. This is an actual darning egg. And what's nice about this is I'll be able to put it right into the toe of this and have it a nice wide surface to work on. But then there's also my grandma's favorite, the good old incandescent light bulb. And this is what I have used for as long as I've been darning socks. This is a more recent purchase. I want to say I got it at like Goodwill or something. I don't know. Anyway, I can stop doing that. <laughs> All right, so first thing I'm going to do is stick my egg into the toe of my sock. And I'm going to make it wide, you know, width-wise, so that I've got, I've got my fabric nice and taut. And I've, so I've got a nice solid surface to work on here. And then we're going to take our yarn. And the first thing that we do is we're going to lay in our um warp which is the lengthwise weaving threads that you then go back and weave through to make your new fabric so I'm going to start over here um just so that I can have that tail out of the way I'm just kind of ouch poke myself in the face with my needle what is wrong with me ah don't do that. <laughs> there. We're going to leave a tail there. And now we're going to lay, lay in our matrix here. So we're going to take a small stitch here. Oh, come on. Be nice for me here. All right, one small stitch there, and then we bring that across, and we'll make another small stitch over here. Like so. I probably should have made that stitch a little bit bigger. Oh, well. And then we'll bring that across, and we'll do another small stitch here. 
So see how we're we're just laying in that matrix of threads all going the same direction, covering over the area where the hole is. Just with taking little bitty little bitty stitches going from one end to the other. All right, make one more here. Okay. And then we can start weaving. Okay. Now, for weaving, you all know you go under one, then over the next one, then under the next one, then over the next one. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Then under, and then we're going to come back through. So you see, I'm taking stitches wherever I'm going under. And now I'm going to pull my yarn through. Like so. I'm pretty sure that you can get darning yarn like special, but why would I do that when I've got this sitting around? Okay, so because I went under this one, I'm going to go over that one and under this one, over that one, under this one, over that one, under this one. And pull her through. Trying to center and actually see what I'm doing at the same time here. So you can start to see that I'm getting a little bit of a woven fabric here going. Okay, so I went under this one, so I'm going to go over that one, under that one, over that one. And now I'm in an open spot, so rather than taking a stitch, I'm just going to make sure that my, my needle goes underneath it. Over and under. And... I think I'd previously crocheted with this yarn, so it's a little bit wiggly. Okay. And now, over that one, under that one, over that one, under that one, over that one, and under this one. I'm just going to keep doing that all the way across until I no longer have any empty space. So really all you're doing is you're just weaving fabric, weaving a fabric over your hole. And the reason that we stretch it out with the um, darning egg or light bulb or whatever it is that you've got is because we want it to be able to fit on your foot when it's stretched over your foot. Um, if we were to darn this without something stretching it out, you would definitely end up with a far too small of a patch. So, and of course, everybody in my family has long hair, so I've got hair all over the place in here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is what I get from grabbing my materials from the living room. Okay. Over, under, over, under, over, and under. And you see, I'm, I'm making an effort to, to make a stitch through that edge on each end there. Just so that it, it's for stability. Okay, over, under, over, under, over, and my last stitch there. Okay. And see, once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult. Looks like I can do about two more passes maybe here. Maybe just the one. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I've got this tail here and I've got this tail here. So let's pull the egg out and turn our sock wrong side out and let's see I'm going to poke this to the inside okay so there's one tail and there's two tails so all I need to do is I'm just gonna skim this through the surface of our woven patch here like so and pull it through if it will pull through there we go oh come on okay and trim that off and then with the short tail i will before threading it up see because i've <laughs> the tail of my thread is shorter than my needle see so I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to do like I did the other direction I'm just going to skim it through the surface there so I'm just catching little bits of that yarn that I used and the little bits of sock that we covered over and We'll push that through until the eye is still sitting there and then thread it up oh boy Here. all right thread her up come on there we go and pull it through and just give it a little tug to make sure that it's stretched out and give it a trim and now we have a non lumpy patched sock hole right there so that's how you darn a sock guys let me know what you think let me know if you're if your mom or your grandma or your great grandma taught you something different, there are a lot of different um, darning techniques. Um, this is probably the simplest one. So, um, if this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like notifications for new and interesting videos from Stellwork Studio. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.